5th of April, a very special day in Australia, Anzac Day. Also, it is the 70th anniversary of the uh, landing of our boys on Gallipoli back in 1915. country's flag proudly flying over the Lightning Ridge building of the RSL. Members starting to mingle now, ready to line up for their march. Many of their familiar faces which march every year here at Lightning Ridge, Bill Waterford, Ken, Bob Molyneux, those are the old hands. Pluto is one of the very old identities of Lightning Ridge. Getting close to the time now to assemble for their march. up there he's told me what we can do and what we can't do everything except genuflect <laughs> except what genuflect no. <laughs> be careful what you say mate you're on film <laughs> what <laughs> anyhow i better go get these uh, fixed up right See out, you later on. right out, johnny yeah, yeah. the boys are starting to assemble now
Gentlemen, um, I do hope that uh, you'll be able to hear me okay. I think I can manage okay without the microphone. Um, thank you very much for coming along this morning. It's uh, just about the same as what the dawn service was. It's uh, about twice as many people, and it's wonderful. The response is wonderful, and thank you very much for taking the time. It's about the only way we indicate how things are going by actually uh, standing up and being counted like we are now. The, uh, well, you have, uh, there's a brochure that's been handed out and uh, it's the normal brochure that uh, is uh, carried down in uh, Sydney on their services in Sydney and uh, it's up to us to modify it as we will or what, how we like. Uh, today, I've just taken out Abide With Me, just to shorten it a little bit and uh, another hymn, Lead Kindly Light, just to shorten it down a bit. It gets fairly warm out here in the sun. By the time we've finished, I think you'd be uh, grateful that we just cut it down a little bit. Uh, I'm being assisted here in the readings by uh, Mr. Dick Lynch, British Empire Medal, a visitor, and Bill Waterford. Uh, the, uh, the service wouldn't be the same without Bill, I feel. And uh, Mr. Jack Pick uh, will read the ode at the right, at the right time. I'll start off now. I will read the prolo prologue. We are assembled here to commemorate that immortal day when the young men of Australia, by their deeds and sacrifice, demonstrated to the world at Gallipoli that Australia was truly a nation. The sons and daughters of Anzac came forward without question, accepted gladly and discharged fully their responsibility during World War II, Korea, Malaya, Borneo and the Vietnam conflict. On this day we remember the sacrifice of such men for an ideal, for a way of life. Let us take strength in the knowledge and hope that our sons and daughters will never forget the example set by their forefathers. In our everyday life, let us endeavour to carry on those traditions established by past wars and conflicts at such tragic cost. We think of every man, woman and child who, in those crucial years, died so that the lights of freedom and humanity might continue to shine. We mature to the obligation of showing gratitude for the peace we enjoy and the responsibility of ensuring that freedom and liberty, so dearly won, is not lost by our own indifference. So let us mourn with pride. Let us also remember with equal pride those who served and still live. See that ye hold fast the heritage we leave you. Yea, and teach your children never in the coming centuries may their hearts fail or their hands grow weak. Our instruments, our instrumenters, will now play for us the receptional and please join in.
thank Thee, O Heavenly Father, for the efforts been made by nations of the world in seeking peace and happiness, happiness relations with, with each other. We praise Thee for the spirit of men and women which have made them scorn the way of safety and virtue to all the common cause of, of freedom and the right of all the noble act of unknown which is believed by God Almighty, correction, mercy of God. We will bring about the final conquest of all the evil forces which threaten peace and security of the world. Thank you, Dick. Mr. Bill Waterford, would you please come now? And Bill is going to read for us a prayer for the Queen. A prayer for the Queen. Almighty God, who rulest over the kingdoms of the earth, vouchsafe to bless thy servant Queen Elizabeth, and be pleased to bestow upon her the blessings of divine wisdom and grace that under her this nation may be wisely directed to take its rightful place in the wider life of the world. Thank you, Bill. I'll take in turn now and read a prayer for the nation. We, pray, we beseech thee, Almighty God, to watch over all those serving in the armed forces and those who still suffer disabilities, through sickness or injuries sustained in war. Strengthen and encourage those who have been saddened by loss of loved ones, especially children deprived of father's care and protection. Grant, we pray thee, that the same courage and resolution, the same comradeship and service shown in the last great struggle in which our country was involved, may now be offered in the great task of making a true and lasting peace. President, um, Bob Molyneux has asked me to make this address, and uh, it's normally in a, uh, a type of address which is originated by the by the, the uh, reader or the speaker uh, of his own ideas. But I feel that uh, the brochure that we have for the service and uh, the writings of Sir William Pease, the national president of the RSL, uh, I think he puts things together a lot more better than I do, so I'm going to uh, uh, read a, um, a piece from his writings of only the other day, eventually. Um, this Anzac Day, I would like to bring up the subject concerning the change in the observance of this day. Everything is changing, and how we observe Anzac Day has, is no exception. <laughs> Anzac Day is upheld so that the matter of, sorry, the nation may take time out to remember great deeds of achievement and sacrifice. May I read from an extract by our RSL National President, Sir William Pease, OBE, as he refers to the Anzac Day Marathon being run in Sydney today. I quote from his writings. The name Anzac is no longer identified with a battle or a campaign, or indeed a military conflict. It is now widely recognised as the word that most accurately depicts all that is best in human nature. The hope of the RSL is that this standard has been established, can be carried on into the future and influence us all in our endeavours. ANZAC stands for great human qualities, for courage, for endurance, for determination, <coughs> for the maintenance of the objective, for compassion. In civilian life, these qualities can best be identified in those fields of endeavour that represent human effort and human sacrifice. Nothing can better amplify this than endeavours of young people on the sporting field and in events that emphasise endurance and stamina. This running of marathon races on Anzac Day will do this for us and will serve as a reminder to all citizens of this nation that Anzac ideals have just as much appreciation, correction, application to the ongoing challenge of civilian life as they have in wartime. The legend of Anzac is an example for us all. In the Anzac Day Marathon races, it will be exemplified in the fullest possible way. The RSL applauds this concept and trusts that it will be accepted, recognised and expanded to become a vital part of the ongoing spirit of an event in 1915 that is very much part of the national ethos of this country. 
The responsibility for the perpetuation of the spirit of Anzac rests with the League today. We now continue on from our service brochure, brochure and uh, I read uh, commemoration to the fallen. <coughs> o Lord, thou lover of souls, who through the mouth of thy prophet of old has declared that all souls are thine. We thank thee for the brave and faithful dead who willingly lay down their lives on the battlefield, in the war, or succumb to the perils of the deep or in the air. We bless thee for the dauntless courage of those defenders of our commonwealth who have fallen in the cause of truth and righteousness. In thy hands, O Father, we leave their, their departed spirit. Grant us to follow their good example in faithfulness and endurance, even unto death, that we may with them be found worthy of the crown of everlasting life. I will now have my cassette player sound the last post. Mr. Jack Pick will recite the ode. Brett will play the Ravelli, and then we'll move on to Advance Australia, all joining in, and then Brett will play what saves the Queen. So now, now the last post. down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them, remember them. Remember them. lest we forget lest lest we forget. Forget.
Thank you, Thank you Brett. That concludes our, uh, our service. And uh, I'd just like to say uh, that the ex-service uh, personnel are invited and visitors in the same category are invited to partake of luncheon. Uh, the luncheon will be served at half past 12. Uh, oh, goodness me, thank you very much. I'm sorry? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll go to that later on. The good lady, a good uh, auxiliary person, pointed out that there should be some wreath laying, and uh, I'm awfully sorry. Would anyone who cared to lay a wreath come forward, please? Continuing now, yes, at 12.30, the, the uh, ladies from the auxiliary will serve luncheon. And uh, sometimes in the past, uh, there's been little intermittently, people coming along, uh, come and sort of drips and drabs. Would you please, today, people who are coming to the luncheon, uh, please make it a point of being seated by half past 12. This will assist the organisation greatly. Thank you again for coming and uh, having uh, such a good, good roll up. Uh, it's been uh, appreciated. Uh, Sergeant Major? Ah. Dismiss the trip. Daddy! Fred! And Pat! Hey, you, daddies. Ball! Ah! Thank you. Remembrance Day, the 11th of November, 1985, at the Lightning Ridge RSL. Lining up for a photo to be taken. Uh, we're here today to, to, to commemorate our comrades that fell in the various wars of the bed. We're not here to glorify war. We're here just to remember those that made the supreme sacrifice. What I intend to do now is uh, uh, play the last post. Uh, Recite the ode <coughs> and uh, have a wreath lying, shall we? But as it is uh, approaching closely to 11 o'clock, which is the time to do the job, we, we will carry on now. Thank you. <coughs>
They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. I shall not worry them, nor the years can be. But the growing down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember this. Lest we forget. Yes, we <coughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now, if there's someone that I've got some race in here, if someone would like to play a race. very much. Now, when we go inside, we have a picture inside uh, painted by Lenny Cram and donated by, uh, to, by Max Holland, Max Shannon. Max Shannon, to the memory of Robert Parker. We also have a lion scroll donated by Sheena in memory of her father. When we go back inside, it's my intention to dedicate those two pictures to those people. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dedicated. I hope the picture in the crowd is memory. I'll ask Max Shannon 
smell. To say a few words, Mrs. Parker said she didn't want to say too much. She left it as Mac to say a few words. Mac. As many of you know that Mrs. Parker is the mother, grandmother or great-grandmother of over a hundred and she's loved and respected by all of them and I'm sure by all of us and she just would like me to pass on how she appreciates the consideration that's been shown to her today. Regarding Bob, 15 years ago we took a trip up to New England and we stayed one night in the Craggyburn Caravan Park. Uh, Thunderbolt country with deep rocks all around and for years and years we've been talking about the return trip. Planning is talking about but unfortunately Bob is gone and we're not able to do that but he was a fine and a kind gentleman and a very good friend and it, I'm very pleased to be able to give that in the honour of a really fine gentleman. Anzac Day, 1986 at Lightning Ridge. The Boy Scouts are going to march in the procession today with the return men. The boys are going to march with the soldiers today. Yes, well the boys are going to hope to have the biggest uh, scout march in Lightning Ridge today, so we've got hopes for it. Oh, that's looks very good. Now 30. 30. Mm -hmm. so, well, the boys look very good here today. I'll uh, be done the first time they've had any experience like this. So, uh, they, should, they should put on the nice display anyway. We'll be taking up a bit of room as you can see. Whereabouts will you be sitting in the procession? Uh, behind the visitors, RSL visitors. Mm -hmm. Right. Good, thanks very much. Well, Tom, it's uh, another Anzac day. I see you're all spruced up. Are you taking the salute today or someone else? No, nobody's taking it today. Nobody's taking it today, eh? How many years you've been coming along to these now, Tom? Ever since the war finished and before. And, and before. Yeah, what about... Uh, the first war, since the first war. On the right side, I've never missed an Anzac Day anywhere since it's been on. Since it's been on. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about your unit in the uh, World War One? Oh, I was formed up from Chile Cabea from the uh, Upper Peninsula, the back of Eden. Mm -hmm. uh, formed up from the 4th Battalion, two companies, the 4th, formed up the nuclear, mm -hmm. and just filled up from reinforcements in Australia, Tele Kabir in Egypt. Went to France, and uh, we were attached to 50 pieces, of course. Yes. 
Uh, we went to France. Uh, fought in all the major battles over there. What's the mo what's the thing that sticks out most in your memory of the whole war itself? Mud and blood and gas. Other than that, is there anything else? Oh, I don't know. Useless wars are useless any time. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to see you here again, Tom, today. Yeah. I hope there's many more. It's good to be here. Well, Freddie Brown, I've seen you around Lightning Ridge a lot, and I don't think you've ever missed one of these since you've been here. No, no. I've been in the first. I'll probably be in the last. Today. Yeah, you were at the first one at the ridge, eh? Yeah, there were 17 of us. 17. What year was that, Fred? I was up on the roof, uh, putting a new roof on my house, so that'd be about 16 years or so ago. Uh -huh. Bruce Davis had come along and dragged me off the roof to form a march. Uh -huh. Bob Davis and his father was the uh, sergeant major, mm -hmm. and uh, we marched down to the old climation hall. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the diggers' rest for dinner. Mrs. Skeets was the uh, proprietor of the <laughs> diggers' rest. And, uh, <laughs> I'd been on uh, antibiotics, so I had a couple of drinks and fell into the two-up ring. I lost 80 quid, and I don't remember how I did it. <laughs> Have you ever wanted a two-up game on an Anzac day? No. <laughs> uh, I keep away from them now. Uh, a bit of wisdom. Can you tell us a little bit of, uh, about the area you were in during the war? Well, I, I went to Bougainville. From there I went to Ley. I was in the transport squadron. And uh, a couple of days after the war was over, uh, our, our squadron was picked to, to go to Singapore and pick up the prisoner of war from the Burma Railway. I was down in uh, Java, they call it then, Mr. Carter now. And we brought back the first uh, plane load of prisoner of war from there. Very sorry state. And uh, in both cases, the Japs were still uh, in charge of the airstrips where we landed. Finally, started a, a third world war there. <laughs> I got out of the plane to put the uh, lock and pins in the undercarriage, and I saw this car coming tearing towards us with armed Japs. So I ran inside, I got a Thompson machine gun, I was going to let fly. <laughs> but the skipper stopped me in time. They were very friendly, and uh, they escorted us everywhere. I can tell you, I felt a bit un uneasy with an armed Japanese standing beside me. <laughs> but uh, everything went all right. Uh, Bangkok was the same. Over there, we, uh, we picked up the first load of uh, prisoner of war from the Burma Railway. And uh, well, when we landed, we had some tins of log cabin tobacco and some bottles of KB. And they hadn't seen me for three and a half years. They went berserk. Anyway, they made themselves sick and tin fruit. I'll bet they did. Oh, yeah, they hadn't had anything. Well, Bill, you've been attending all the uh, RSL uh, marches here, Anzac Day marches, ever since they've been at Lightning Ridge, I presume. A lot of them before the Lightning Ridge was quite grew up a bit. Mm. I used to go to Walgut. Did you? All the way to Walgut, yeah. Yeah. Ah, and uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the unit you was in in the war, Bill? I was in the 2nd 18th. 2nd 18th. Can you tell us a little bit about them and where they were and what they done? We, uh, it was part of the 8th Division and we went over to Malaya 12 months before hostilities started and we got caught over there for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And you was on one, in one of the concentration camps, I presume? Uh, Which one was you in, Bill? I was with Changi for a good while and then we went up to the Burma Railway for a while. Mm -hmm. I was up there for six months. Mm -hmm. Then we came back again. Uh, yeah, we were in various camps around the... Yeah. Around Changi, helped them build air dwellings yeah. and tunnels and things. I had an uncle who was in the 8th and ended up in Burma on the Burma Railway. Same name as me. I wonder if you ever come across him. Jack. No, Jack I Cram. He come back. He, come, he went up there as a man about 16 stone and come back about 7. <laughs> well, there was cholera broke out in our camp too up in the railway. And uh, it took a lot of people. But the Japs got some, some vaccine in and uh, yeah. most of us got out of it. 
<laughs> anyway, Bill, thanks very much. Good. Well, Bobby Molyneux, you've been at Lightning Ridge a long time, mate. I reckon you can count on your hand everybody's been here before you, eh? <laughs> but uh, talking about uh, Anzac's Day, Bob, uh, you've been to every meeting I've ever had here, I presume, and many others in other places. Yes, I have done so. Uh, I come here in 1926, and at that time they had a very good first war. And yeah. the most popular dance fall of the year, the RSL war, mm -hmm. and uh, I used to have it uh, until the next war broke out, and sort of went off, and we started again. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us anything about the unit you was involved with, Bob, during the war? Yeah, I was uh, with the 2nd, 2nd Pioneers. Whereabouts were they? They saw service in uh, Syria. Malaya, uh, <coughs> <coughs> uh, <coughs> most of them were taken prisoners in Malaya. And we reformed the unit back in the way that we saw service in New Guinea, Maratai, and Mm hmm and now you're the you are the president now of the RSL here at Lightning Ridge. Yep. Yes. Well, uh, you look like you're going to have a good turnout today, Bob, and a good march. Yes, I hope I do. And I hope uh, they were going pretty well this morning at the dawn service. If they keep going, they might be very merry. Some of the <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you very much, Bob. Well, Sheriff, it's great to see you here on uh, Anzac Day here in Australia. It's uh, very good to. Uh, See, you're also representing your country, and it shows that we've forgot the past, and it's the peace of the future we're all thinking about, and friendship, isn't it? Always. Yeah. Always That's right. We can never, we can never bring the past back. We can always live for the future, can't we? Always friends and brothers each other. That's right. Yes. We are doing nothing. We are best of friends. Always, we will be all together. And that's what life's all about now. And this is one of the reasons for holding this day every year, is to remind us that we want none of that type of the past, but we want a good future. Yes, have you anything else you'd like to say to us? The best country for us is our country also. We are telling all of the forget past, we are together always. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Well, they're lining up. Boy Scouts in the back getting behind.
There's quite a following here on Anzac Day at Lightning Ridge. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, I hope my voice holds out and you can hear what I have to say and follow the program. Uh, it is very, very pleasing to see such a wonderful roll up this morning. And, uh, and a special welcome to visitors. And uh, after the service, I'll explain the, the event uh, for the rest of the day. Um, I'll, 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 if you have a program, I have a brief skip slightly because it's pretty hot out in the sun. And uh, uh, this program is actually for the Sydney service, and uh, I feel sure we can break it down a little bit here, which we're going to do. Four minutes. <laughs> the eyes have it. <laughs> right now. I will read the prologue. We are assembled here to admit so that lights of freedom and humanity might continue to shine. We mature to the obligations of showing gratitude for the peace we enjoy and the responsibility of ensuring that freedom and liberty, so dearly won, is not lost by our indifference. Let us mourn with pride, but let us also remember that equal pride those who serve and still live. See that you hold fast the heritage we leave you. Yea, and teach your children that never in the coming centuries may their hearts fail or their hands grow weak. Well, uh, over to you, the, the band will lead in the singing of the recessional. I would read now 
prayer for the nation. We beseech thee, Almighty God, to watch over all those serving in the armed forces and those who still suffer disabilities through sickness or injury sustained in war. Strengthen and encourage those who have been stabbed by the
straight on to the bench, straight ahead. Yes. Yes. And then uh, by popular demand, uh, they'll have the bench straight up there. And I know by popular demand, they will also have the bench.